Cheers, boys, to another one. Back when I used to work at a movie theater, um, we'd have one theater reserved every week for Bollywood movies, and that would sell tickets. I mean, people loved their Bollywood. And there's one job at the theater which is completely pointless, and that is the theater checker. And as a theater checker, you walk into the theater, you count how many people are there, and it's really to measure if anyone had really snuck in. But no one ever really did that. In reality, you'd walk in, watch a couple of scenes, and then walk out. Ugh, that's so irresponsible. While I was watching this Bollywood movie, there was a scene where there was two people talking to each other. It was filmed in two singles and one single had a lot more depth of field than the other. And when it made the cut, it was so jarring that it threw me out of the movie. Not that I understood what was going on, but it visually confused me. So in a roundabout way, in this video, I wanna show you guys how you can manipulate depth of field and control it so you don't have that problem. But most importantly, so you can put the right amount of depth of field in your shots depending on your narrative. If you look up depth of field, you can find many definitions, but the way that I like to explain it is that it's the amount of Z space that's in focus. If we think of our world as a graph, we have the X axis that's left and right, that'll be like the focal plane. Then you have the Y axis up and down, and then you have the Z axis, which is going forward and backward, going to the lens and going away from the lens. So depth of field is the amount of this space that's in focus. A shallow depth of field will have a very narrow focus plane, creating an image where only a sliver is in focus and the rest is out of focus. While a large depth of field will expand that focal plane, making more of the image in focus and not only having the subject in focus, but possibly even having the background in focus as well. Depth of field is great and all to understand, but it doesn't really mean anything if you can't control it, if you can't make an image with the right amount of depth of field that you want in that image. And that's the specific part. It's the amount that you want. And shallow depth of field will forever be linked to the cinematic image. And that's because it looks cinematic. But usually when we're talking about that, we're mostly talking about medium and close-up shots when filming people. And in that sense, it looks great. But there are a ton of cinematic shots that have a lot of depth of field. Usually they're wide shots, they're landscapes, they show the environment. They could be tracking shots on a wide lens and people love those shots. So don't get in this tunnel vision thinking that every shot needs to have a blurred background, every shot needs to have a very shallow depth of field because it's just not true. There's a lot of great shots that have a lot of depth of field, a lot in focus and it really depends on what your background is. An easy rule of thumb, if your background is important to the scene and important to the character, then have a lot of depth of field. Let the viewer see it if it's important. If it's not important to the scene and it's not important to the emotion of your character, then you can blur it out. Again, that's a rule of thumb. It's not a law, so you can break it if you have to, but that's a good guide to follow. So now let's begin our journey to become the master of depth. Depth of field is controlled by four things. The first we're going to talk about are f-stops. Out of the three main camera settings, ISO, shutter speed, and f-stops, f-stops are the only one that affect depth of field. A wide open lens or a low f-stop value will have a shallow depth of field, meaning the focus plane will be small and the background blurry. A closed lens or an f-stop with a high numerical value means that the focus plane will be much larger and have the background more in focus to possibly actually be in focus as well. So right off the bat, if you want a shallow depth of field, you need to shoot at a low f-stop, either a 2.8 or lower. Number two, distance between the subject and the lens and then we'll talk about between the subject and the background. The closer you are to the lens, no matter what lens you're shooting on or what f-stop you're at, the shallower your depth of field. An easy explanation is that if the subject is right up against that lens, you have to bring the focus plane to follow him way close to the lens. So the focus plane is going away from the background, therefore the background will be more blurry. Now let's talk the reverse. If you're further away from the lens, the more in focus your image will be, the more depth of field you'll have. And that's because when we take that focus plane and we take it further away from the lens, we're actually taking it closer to the background. 
So the closer the focus plane is going to the background, the more it will be in focus. And if our subject is right next to the background, we'll have an incredible amount of depth of field. Everything will be in focus just because our background is on the focus plane. It's in focus, just like our subject. So there's nothing that can get blurred. So although we were talking about distance between the subject and the lens, you also need to think about the distance between the subject and the background. If I was standing right next to that painting, that would be in focus just like I would be in focus. But since I'm kind of in the halfway point, I'm about probably two feet away from my lens and a good five feet away from the wall, you have the wall out of focus slightly, I'm in focus and my hand is out of focus if I bring it towards you. That's my current depth of field with my focus plane. A quick tip to make your interview shots a little more interesting, when you're setting up for that shot, don't set up next to a wall, but rather find some place with an open background, around 50 feet or so, because then you can blur that and have a much better image. Okay. Number three, focal length. The longer your focal length on your lens, the shallower your depth of field, even at the same f-stop. The wider your focal length, the larger your depth of field. The last manipulator, number four, is sensor size. The larger the sensor size on your camera, the less depth of field you will have. Remember using a digital camcorder to record your home videos? And you remember how everything was basically in focus? Well, that's because it was using a very small sensor. And with a small sensor, opposite of a large sensor, you have a lot of depth of field. So a lot more of the image is in focus. Now we have micro four thirds, APS-C, and full frame. And each one, respectively, has less depth of field as you get larger. This is really because as the sensor gets larger, it sees more of the image, meaning a smaller sensor is really just cropping a full frame image. So when you go full frame and you're gonna have the subject the same size in your image, when you match those two things up, the full frame sensor has more depth of field because you had to physically move closer to your subject to match the framing of let's say a micro four thirds. So although the sensor plays a role in depth of field, it also is influenced by distance, which we covered earlier in the video. So when you put it all together, excluding sensor size, cause you really don't need that new camera, just use what you have today. So when we put it all together, if you wanna have the most shallow depth of field, then you need to shoot at the lowest f-stop. You need to have the subject as close as possible to your lens and you need to have the subject as far away from the background, and you need to be shooting at the longest lens possible, so a telephoto lens, 135, 200. That will give you the shallowest depth of field possible. Now on the reverse, if you want the most depth of field, you want everything in focus, you need to be shooting at a high f-stop. You need to be shooting with a wide lens. You need to have the subject far away from the lens and very close to your background. Of course, while we're filming and actually making a narrative and filming stories on screen, we're not always gonna be at these two extremes. We're gonna be somewhere in the middle. But the whole point is that now you can fluctuate where that somewhere is depending on your scene and depending how you wanna tell your story. Is the background important? Well, let's give it a little more depth of field. Do you really wanna focus in on the emotion of your character? Well, let's give it a little less depth of field. Let's take out all the distractions. So now you can really decide what you wanna do with your images. So there's so many options, there's so many opportunities to be creative, and we're just talking about depth here. We're just talking about what's blurry and what's sharp. That's not even talking about storytelling or, or even any of the more noticeable features of filmmaking that the audience would notice. This is just a very technical thing on our side. So get out there, figure out what you like, and if you're looking for some free filmmaking tools, it's in the description of this video, guys. You don't have to go far. There's a shot list, there's lighting diagrams, and there's even a free lighting ebook. That one's pretty good, right? If you got this far, you must like the video, so give it a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on my next video, even though you already know it's every Friday.